Welcome to the future of spelling. My name is Sir Link a lot, as I like to link a lot. Linking is a way to learn any fact by trying to find a connection, and it is really useful for spelling those difficult words that don't spell as they sound, like the number two up to words like accommodation. There are many linking techniques. Lesson one was words inside words. Lesson two was things inside words. And lesson three was things that sound like letters. Today's lesson, lesson four, is words that have... <laughs> words that have... Stop it. Words that have silent letters. Now, before we go any further, I need to give you some feedback from stuff that's come into me on my Twitter account, Facebook, and YouTube in the last 24 hours. It's not all about me. This is not about me. Well, the show is, obviously, but linking generally is not about me. It's about you trying to think of links. I'm there to help you out along the way, trying to give you ideas, but it's all about you trying to think of your own links. If you can think of a link that works for you, it works. We can't say you're wrong. So there's more than one answer. I've had some, I've just got three shout outs here. The first one is from a boy called Sam, who sent me a message uh, via his father. He said, February, the tricky part of February tends to be the middle bits, these the first R. F-E-B-R-U-R-A-Y. And he said to his dad, Dad, in February, it's cold. <laughs> B-R is inside the word February. <laughs> Tremendous. We love you, Sam. You are a linker. Another one was from a nine-year-old boy called Liam. We covered the word believe in the first lesson. Do you believe it? Or is it a big fat lie? Lie inside the word believe... But he came up with this one, which I think is great. Does Eli believe Eve? Eli is a name, E-L-I, and Eve is the name next to it. So it's E-L-I-E-V-E. -E. Does Eli believe Eve? Genius. Very clever. From a nine-year-old as well. It's tremendous. Another round of applause. Or should I like to say, or I like to say, a two-finger ripple to be civilised. Two-finger ripple. Rippity rip, rippity rip. Then I just had another mission a second ago from a seven-year-old girl via her mother. The mother tells me she's doing the bundles of words on the app, going through the bundles. Any word she gets incorrect, she looks at it and corrects it herself, and she's sailing through. So that's really good to hear. That's like doing it on your own, just at home, without the teachers getting involved. It's wonderful. It's great stuff. So tremendous, tremendous stuff to get through. In fact, all three of them have earned themselves a badge which could be one of me, the logo, or other badges, which I'll come back to later. Very exciting stuff, very exciting, really good. So, the first word we're doing today is... Thumb. Thumb. We love a thumb, four figures make sense, thumb. But without that, you're stuffed. So the word thumb. The last letter tends to be tricky. It's found that some children spell the first part F, not TH. We'll come back to that. Maybe you touch your thumb. T of touch is at the start of thumb there. T of thumb. But at the end, there's a silent letter. There's a B. Some people think, isn't that thumb? Thumb. Anyway, can you think of a link in the next five seconds for the word thumb, the last letter? It could be a visual link, something that looks like, you know, have a think the B, what it, look, what it could look like, the B, or something else. It's up to you. Let's start that clock. How did you get on? Thumb. The letter B at the end looks like a child giving the big thumbs up to this app. Yeah? Did you get it? Yeah? Mars. If you did, Give yourself a two-finger ripple. Rippity rip, rippity rip, we love it. Very good. But you may have thought of something else, like um, the be a bang. Oh, I bang my thumb. The be a bang, the be a thumb. Doesn't matter, it could be anything. But I do like that visual one. Visual learning is a very powerful way to learn. Good stuff. So the next word up is... Autumn. What a 
Tough word, not, not tricky. Tough, 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 tough word. To me, that should be O-R-T-U-M or O-R-T or term E-R-M or something. But this is why I like the English language. You may think at the moment, oh, this is a nightmare. But no, once you can start spelling these words and you find out the story of these words, more of that to come uh, tomorrow, the story of these words, um, the more you'll think, oh, I like this language. It's got some lovely stories behind it and sort of different backgrounds. You know, if it's all like you spelt words as they sounded, it'd be a bit dull, frankly. Autumn, tricky. There's a small word inside there. I'm hoping you can see the small word inside it, the three letter word, uh, but also the last letter, the N. But the start's tricky. It's just a, just a really tough word. In America, they call the autumn the fall because the leaves fall from the trees. I think possibly, I mean, maybe I need to look this up. They call it that because autumn's a really, really, really hard word to spell. So I will check that out. Anyway, the N is a real nightmare. Or to, oh, 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 tr tricky, difficult. Oh, I keep saying tricky. So let's have a look at the link. Autumn. The AU of August is followed by the word tum and the N of November. Leaves fall on your tum in the autumn, which begins at the end of August and ends in November. There you go. AU of August, tum, N of November. If you can't spell August, we've got a link for that first, which we covered in lesson three. It's not just spelling, you've also learned when autumn begins and ends. Spelling is the focus, of course, but the occasional bit of extra information or something else, why not? Because linking works for anything. Useful stuff. Let's see if you can get that one right next time. I'm confident you will. Linking's great. So the next word is going to be... Spaghetti. Or some people say spaghetti. Spaghetti. Difficult word. Spag, spag bowl, tends to be fairly okay because people shorten it to spag bowl, spaghetti bolognese. On the app, we've also called spag bowl is spelling, punctuation and grammar based on linking. I'm very happy with that. Have your daily allowance of spag bowl. One of the bundles is called Spaghetti Shakespeare, level three. So this word, you can't hear the H in the middle. These silent letters, difficult, really, really, really not easy. And the ending could be with a Y, of course, but you're gonna have, we've got a trick for that as well at the end. So let's uh, have a look at the link and enjoy. Spaghetti. At the end of this word is the girl's name, Hetty, with the last letter being I for Italy. Hetty and Betty love spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. Hetty and Betty love spaghetti. Is it in? You know it is. Um, right, the next word we're going to do. Oh, did you spot my mistake in the first part of the uh, lesson when I misspelled February? It wasn't an intentional mistake. It was a complete muck up. I said F-E-B-R-U-R-A-Y. No, that's rubbish. It's U-A-R-Y. Oh, U-A-R-Y. It's actually R-U-A-Y. I'll get that right in the end. I'm all over the place. F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. That's right. Are you a romantic like me who loves Valentine's? Are you a romantic? Are you a R is also in the middle. So you've got, it's February, F-E-B-R. But also, using that R again, are you a romantic who loves February? Because of Valentine's Day, which is in February. So that was a complete mistake by me. Minus one point for Selink a lot. Get on the naughty step. Disaster. Anyway, 
The next word is Ireland. You can't hear that S. Now, Ireland, the country, is I-R-E. It's also known as the Republic of Ireland. And it's also called ERA, E-I-R-E. -E. So if we do sort of match up, match up some letters here, Ireland, R-E of Ireland, the country, R-E of Republic, Republic of Ireland, and R-E of ERA, E-I-R-E, or I-R-E of Ireland. It's all there. So the country Ireland is next to Northern Ireland, and that whole bit is called an island itself, where it's surrounded by water. Right, let's put you to the test. We're gonna start the clock in a second. Look at this. It's made up of two words. When you can spot those two words, put it together in a catchy sentence. You've got five seconds. We're going to start that clock. Island. The word is made up of two smaller words, is and land. An island is land surrounded by water. Ha <laughs> ha! An island is land surrounded by water. So you've got the spelling, but also the meaning. I always get the meaning involved in an animation so you can use it straight away in your work. Great stuff. So the next word is... Isle, like down in a church, you walk down the aisle. Very, very hard word. I mean, that's I-L-E, surely. But no, another good story to it. We love these stories. All these words, they've got a reason for why they spell a certain way. Some don't, most of them do though. Or we, there is always a reason, but sometimes we can't find that reason, which I quite like. Anyway, Isle, that first letter. It sounds like Ireland, but Isle, A-I-S-L-E. Over to the link. Isle. The letter A is next to the word is that is followed by the L-E of the word left. Can I see your ticket, please? Ah, Isle A is left. Aisle A is left. A is left. So with that, we've not used the FT of the word left, but that's fine. That's like using part of a word, which we'll come back to in another lesson. It doesn't have to be a complete word and a word to help you spell. Even if it's a part word, that's fine. That's okay. Aisle A is left. You get the common sense. You know there's no F or T in aisle. Okay, not a sort of high frequency word, but a handy one to know. It's a good sort of technique of showing you how good this is for attacking silent letters in words. The next word is receipt. Look at this word. Receipt. Um, I mean the first, the C-E-I is already, um, already tough, but the P, I mean, the P. What P? But there it is. We've got to deal with it and embrace the whole thing. Now, Here's a challenge, big challenge here. This will be a good one, a good one. Look at this word. There's a big word in the middle, a five letter word backwards. You've got five seconds to find this word. Start the clock. Did you get it? Or did you? Receipt. The word peace is inside the word receipt, but it's back to front. Waiter. This piece of paper you call a receipt is all back to front, and I'm not happy. A receipt is a piece of paper, back to front, peace. And if you can't spell the word peace, either download the app by going to the website to get the code for free during lockdown, or wait for the Homophones lesson coming up soon. Piece of paper receipt. Is it in? You know it is. The next word is 
It's got a K at the start, a silent K. No. K N O W. There it is. No. I mean, the W also is tricky. I mean, it's not a given for sure. So that K, difficult. Difficult, very much so. So, over to the link. No. There is a K at the start and a W at the end. Did you know that a V in a mirror on the floor can make a K and in a mirror on the wall it can make a W? No, I didn't. But now I know. Now you know. Now, with the K there, you know. Let's stick with the uh, the silent K theme. The next word up is knife. Another silent K at the start. Now you could say kitchen knife, the K of kitchen, the K of knife. That technique is called letter linking. I'll come back to that. That's a tremendous technique. I love that technique. It is so powerful. But I've gone for a visual link, a visual one for the letter K. But you know, Whatever works for you works for me, you know, no problem. So over to the link. Knife. The K at the beginning is made up of four knives. One for each of the following four letters. One knife for each of the letters that follow the letter K. There we have it. There's a nice story behind that word, a really good one. It's called the etymology of a word, or the origin of the word, where it came from, which will be told to you by my partner in crime, a lady, a lexicographer. Very, very, very soon. Very, very soon indeed. Anyway, that ends today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to go to the website if you want to get um, uh, access to the... Uh, to the app for free during lockdown you get the code from the website or talk to me on twitter or facebook if you've got any questions or you want things linked or you've got your own links if you've got your own link like uh, sam and liam today you can only serve a badge here's this one thumb the bee of thumb we love it uh knife there's the knife the four knives there. Come on, come on, come on. Or, good old fashioned, me. There it is. So, I'll see you next time. But I'll finish off with, as I always do, the name of the app is Sir Linkalot. Is it in? You know it is.